Hello YouTube, uh, start a new project here today. Uh, this is going to be for that off-road event I was uh, talking about, also asking for help on with suggestions just for a little bit of fun for my YouTube followers. Got two suggestions. One of them didn't fly because they wanted some, you know, more than one uh, item, and that was a bar stool. I really did like that, so I am working on getting some more of these uh, roller rockers. Um, Dude, I really should have looked up your name before I made this video, but I really did like the barstool idea, and I'm trying to get more of these so I can make those. Uh, I'm going to go for it if I can get more of these. So, um, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of clocks out of these timing chains, though. Uh, timing chain clocks, they turn out really nice. They'll make a couple of great door prizes for this uh, off-road event coming up. Um, right now, I, I did cheat a little bit because I do have quite a few things to make. I've got a cam kit coming for the Jeep. It should be here in about three or four days. So I'm going to try and, uh, of course, do a nice job on these. But I'm going to try and get a couple things cranked out so I can get back to work on the Jeep. Um, if I have to push it off a week, I will. But I have three and a half weeks until the off-road event. And the Jeep's been sitting there for, God, two months. And I haven't touched it because I was basically pouting. But um, anyhow, I'm done pouting. Jeep's going to get back on the road. Roller rockers, unmolested, sandblasted. I got these little plastic caps here that got to come off. Some of them kind of come off with the uh, sandblasting. Others uh, did not. It gets a little foggy in my little baby sandblaster. So uh, we'll make them all look like this. I got my little dead blow and I got a screwdriver. So I'm going to go do that. I still haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with these. I believe the caterpillar is probably going to happen. That noise is a sprinkler the wife set up on the uh, outside of the tent. So anyhow, kind of probably the rough idea with this. Timing chain clocks. Um, the cam is actually still sitting in the sandblaster. So that's as far as I've gotten right now. That's just uh, kind of the start of the video right here. So this hasn't been sandblasted yet, a little oily still. So anyway, that's where we're at at the moment. I'll get some of the sand off here, get these little caps off. Um, kind of put a little bit more thought into it, figure out what else I'm going to use to it, figure where I'm going to tack these legs, see if it's actually even, ooh, I'm not sure where I can even weld on this thing, it's mostly aluminum. We'll figure something out, we always do, right? Okay, so when I'm making these timing chain clocks, this is uh, kind of my setup, I'll take just whatever round rod I can find, this one I use one of the Nelson studs I have, um, it's kind of welded it to the edge of my table. Put a little timing chain cog through the uh, old gear set, through the uh, rod there. Put it how I like it. I like the keyway there on the downside. Try and match it with the keyway on the bottom there. And uh, then I'll just kind of tack weld it in a few spots. Tack weld the bottom in a few spots. I usually do the th three, nine, and six. Do a little bit more on the top gear set. Um, try not to go where you see it coming off the gears here on the corner. You know, you don't want to hit that area there. Try and keep it up in here where it's actually making full contact or you're going to distort your chain and pull it over. And it's going to hang funny. Uh, the last one I made was off my Jeep where I actually, um, what I do, I jumped time a couple times on that timing chain. I actually bent this row of uh, chain on the double roller. And so it kind of hung funky, but it hung funky because it was beat up and broken. So it actually worked pretty cool. Anyhow, so you want to make sure you make your weld up here where it's actually making full contact. But uh, anyway, just my thought on it. You build it however you want to build it, and however you like to hang, really. It's, it's your project. So that's just how I do it. So it's the whole point of you building a project. Build it how you want to build it. Anyway, uh, these things are really basic, but they look really cool hanging on a shop wall or in a front room wall. Um, so anyway, uh, that's how I do mine. I just kind of hang it there, let it hang where you can see what you're doing, what it's going to look like when it's done. And it's really basically the whole project. Hello YouTube. It's uh, probably been a week, week and a half since I've been filming on this. I remember I uh, got the two timing chains tack welded up on the back side. I had them hanging on a mud lug there. So, anyhow, that's uh, where I remember leaving off. Um, I believe I said I was working lots of hours, which uh, I do that a lot anyhow. So that's where I'm starting off today. Um, 
it was a little while ago, so I'll probably repeat a couple things. So anyhow, um, I got these tacked off here. Uh, I know I, I, I said that was pretty much the, the project itself. Um, you know, kind of is, kind of isn't. So it's where we got it. It's how it's going to hang. It It's going to look real nice hanging on someone's shop wall, front room, if you're really a gearhead um, with the two of them. Look real good. This, of course, will be the back. Uh, what I do there. Anyhow, so that that'll be pretty much how it hangs. <clears throat> um, what we're gonna definitely want to do though, because of the size of the clocks, I should have really opened one of these. I got a couple in a Ziploc bag though. So sorry about the shakiness of the camera. You should be used to my videos by now. Okay, so with the clocks, if you've never built a clock before. These little guys here are not really the size of the whole of a timing chain. So you're going to pull this little guy, this little nut here off. All right. When you come to do the hands, you got these little parts here. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit, though. So pull this little rubber guy off of this little brass ring. We'll just... Anyhow, so... The hole isn't all that big, so you're going to want to find a washer that will fit around the clock parts. That's where our bucket of washers come in. All right, and This little guy is usually your little topper, and this little rubber guy is always for looks, and it hides our washer that we find and kind of tack weld in here. So um, that's typically how we do it, and I already noticed I... Uh, Doing this stuff after work when you're tired is a bad idea, and I screwed up already. Actually, no, I have to cut these down. Uh, no matter which way you do it, your arms aren't long enough when you do these timing chains. Um, you actually have to take and cut this off, and I actually forgot about that. So I will break out my cutting wheel on my grinder. Um, I completely forgot about that when I started this video. You do have to cut this little piece off because... Your clock parts here aren't long enough unless I bought one. Sometimes you get lucky at the uh, the craft store and when you buy your clock parts, you can find one that actually has a long enough uh, part on it. They come in different lengths when you buy them and they're usually out of the length you need. Um, this one might be good. I bought a different variety of all the different lengths they had. Now if I have one and we got lucky, I'll go through that here after I shut off the camera might not have to cut them off but typically I end up uh, having to cut this part off the timing chain sprocket but uh i'll go through my clock parts here in a second like i said i just you watched me pull that out of the ziploc bag um anyhow 10 to 1 odds are we'll be cutting this part off of both of the timing chains uh, it's not that hard it just takes you know a couple minutes with your your cut wheel we'll cut that off you make it look pretty with your uh grinder and then your flap disc um you know it's the front side of the clock anyhow you could make it the backside when you tack weld it, whichever. Like I said, I, I spaced it by doing it when I was tired. Um, I should have said that in the first place, my bad. Um, but anyhow, then you, you'll find your washer. You'll just kind of tack weld the, that, that in there. This little guy covers the ugliness of your tack weld. And then you do your clock parts. So we'll get on that. And next time you turn it on, we'll have a, a washer in place. And I'll show you how to put the clock together. Okay, so right now I got the clock parts on the back. I welded the washer in. Um, there's a couple different ways I do the washer. I got this other one set up so you can see it. Uh, you can see I got to clean up this a little bit more and make it look more presentable. Um, but this one's just barely on there. I didn't tuck it down as far as I'd like to. I've only got it just flush with the top of our little uh, set, set screw here. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do this when you're doing it. You can set our washer pretty much flush. You can set it down a little bit in there, or you can actually set it down halfway in there. I mean, it really just kind of depends on what you want. Usually I try and go about a quarter inch because you want that nut to actually kind of grab. Um, this one I was just kind of trying to go just flush so I could pretty this up a little bit and actually get this a uh, little nicer looking, but kind of trying to be in a hurry today. Um, it's one day off, things kind of kill me. This event's actually really sneaking up on me fast, so... Being in a hurry is really not helping me though, as you can tell. So, um, I, I should have really just went on my way of doing it a quarter inch down. 
would have actually saved me a lot of headaches. Um, but I didn't, so I'm going to fill this in with some weld and, and kind of cleaned up a little bit. Um, one thing I, I, I should really mention, I'll actually probably throw a disclaimer in at the front of the video. Um, timing chains, the type of steel they use isn't really, I don't know, it's not like a real actual steel, I guess. I mean, a magnet sticks to it, and that's usually what I kind of judge off of whether I make my, my projects with or not. You know, it's if a magnet sticks to it, I can weld it, I can make my junk metal art, right? But when, when it really comes down to welding on this stuff, it's, even when you hit it with your grinder, you'll notice the sparks it throws are, they're different. They're kind of like watching a firework uh, type spark go away from your grinder. Um, the taste, you know, if you're not wearing a dust mask, um, you'll notice the taste is different in your mouth. Um, I suggest actually wearing a dust mask if, if you're worried about shit like that. Um, when you're welding on this stuff, it's going to smoke and it's going to catch fire and a, a weird liquid comes out on it. So I'm going to guess it's got a, a really weird composite base to it. Or it's got a, um, I should really actually Google what it's actually made out of this, this stuff. So I'll put a disclaimer on the front of the video, uh, kind of a weld it, do this project on your own risk. Um, when they start heating up, the liquid starts flowing i actually take and i'll walk away and let the fumes go away so <clears throat> just kind of let this be a warning to you uh they're just kind of weird material of, that they use for these timing chains um this style is actually worse than the other ones i've worked with um these cast ones actually i've never had that much of a problem with uh you get the different type of spark and stuff but the fluid coming out this one's the worst uh i don't know so just kind of keep that in mind if you're going to do one of these timing chain clocks uh and when you get into junk metal welding you get into weird car parts and stuff from the internals um just kind of keep that in mind you you don't really know yeah your magnet might stick to it so it should be good to go it's good metal you can weld it you're gonna get in some weird shit though so uh you don't really know what you're breathing in um just kind of keep that in mind so Anyway, I'm going to get this touched up, fixed up, then we'll go ahead and put the clock hands on it. Okay, so for right now, I've got this guy looking much better, all right, which is awesome. Um, I've got this one welded to the backside to show you that you can weld it from the backside, because that's really all it does is hold the little rubber mount in there. So it's good looking good. All we really care about is that the threads are sticking up above. I did take this down probably about a quarter inch. There was a nice little groove line inside there that I could follow around. So that's looking good. Um, so right now we've got both these to about the same point where we just want to put our hands on. The clock hands, that is. Um, so this clock set that I had came with a set. I'm not really into gold, but the person getting this one might be. So... Um, basically what I did was, uh, I picked up just a bunch of different random clock sets. Um, so these, these nice, uh, size of clock hands, pretty good size for what, you know, the timing chain is. Um, these here on the other hand are quite gigantor. Um, when it's pointing at three and nine, they're going to be overhanging. Uh, it's not going to look good. So this is where it comes to mixing and matching with what you've got. Um, I know when it comes time to do this other one I'm working on, which is going to be the pendulum clock, it actually came with these little teeny things. Now, when you do a pendulum clock, who's going to want to use those little teeny things? So we'll end up pulling those out of there and see if maybe they'll work. It is the same brand. Um, and I mean, that's going to be on a ring of pinion hanging over here. So, I mean, that could quite honestly use these gigantor hands and be just fine. It'll actually hang up here. So, um, there's those. There's these from other kits I've used. Um, sometimes I've melted these, you know, happened to try and do a little touch-up work because I'm an idiot instead of just, you know, taking apart thinking, oh, I can do that real quick. Uh, you melt things. Don't do that. Always take your clock hands off if you're going to touch something up with a little bit of the torch work. Um, learn from my mistakes is why I make these. So, you know, there you'll always end up with extra parts here and there. Um, 
So mix and match your parts around. Sometimes you'll realize the other brands don't match with what you've got. Right now I've got all the same brands, so chances are they should work. Um, I've got these ones here, so I'm going to play around and try and find something that will work on both the timing clock chain, timing chain clocks, sorry. Um, the numbers, this one here came with a nice black and gold set to match the uh, gold and silver, yeah, gold second hand there as well the gold set so we'll get those on typically my clocks i just go the uh 12 6 3 9 it's probably what i'm going to stay true with um on both of these this one here i had to buy numbers for that's awesome whatever that's about um do that with both those probably stay true with that with the ring and pinion clock which i'll um finish up with here as well all i did was really weld the bottom of this um so I got a ring and pinion from, I believe it was a uh, Jeep Cherokee that got melted. And uh, maybe this was a Suzuki Samurai from my buddy Shane. And this was an um, inner transmission part from a Jeep of sorts. So uh, sticking with all Jeep parts, this is a uh, Jeep event, I believe. Anyhow, so that's where we're at right now. I've been doing enough rambling here to uh, at least get these mounted. What we do here is just a test fit. We do not snap in the second hand. Once that's snapped in there, it's a pain in the butt to get back out. We just test fit these. We roll them around. Uh, when you roll these around, you really just want to roll them by turning the dial in the back, clockwise only. Uh, I guess not only clockwise. It does tell you you can go both ways. You usually just follow directions on the clockwork. Um, don't just spin the hand. But uh, when, you, when you lay your clock numbers out, actually set your parts in there not the second hand um, then put your numbers on that way pull it back apart then you spray paint it with whichever color of spray paint you're doing it once you get the numbers on I always go clear spray paint it's just how I do it when you're doing the gears for my personal preference so uh, then you put the clock back together and you have a nice okay so here you go this one's done uh, pretty basic I'll just kind of show you the quick steps here trying to keep my video shorter I keep saying that but that doesn't work I actually went back and watched my old one see what I did different I'll try and make a difference on the next one okay so um, as you can see got that little nut in the bottom there if GoPro will focus which doesn't look like it's going to little nut in the bottom just kind of screw that in there um, the hour hand uh, if you can see the plastic part the uh, plastic part what would that be called whatever we'll just call it plastic and you see how the hand here is just kind of um, I don't know they're just kind of wide it's more of a press fit here so what I do is I, I line it up with the number three now <laughs> I do a test run on these before I glue the numbers on is I'll put the clock parts on I'll put the hands on and I'll set up the numbers that way to where I know they actually line up with the hands when the hands are moving so that's where I'll glue the numbers on there's a craft glue that I use I don't remember what it's called I got it at the craft store it's uh, GS 3000 we'll call it um, anyhow so when I'm putting this back together now I know that if I line the hour hand up with the number three it's gonna work when I put the minute hand back on so anyhow the hour hand is just kind of a press fit thing I'll line it up with the number three I'll press it on there just gets a nice snug fit and we know it's going to be on there good. It doesn't need glued or anything like that. So now that one's on there good. Okay, the minute hand. So the minute hand has a little rectangular notch on it. That lines up with a little rectangular notch on the clock parts. So I line that up with the 12 o'clock number. So like I said, when I did my little test run, I know I at least did the 12, 3, 6, and 9. So they were right. So if I do that, I know that's all good to go. So... I take my little lock, oh yeah that goes on before the minute hand, or the second hand, so take the little lock and it just screws right in there, you got to fidget with it once in a while, alright, that just kind of locks everything in there, if I can get it to not cross thread, okay there we go, shouldn't cross thread now, alright, let's get it a little bit snug, see where turn that all right so then we'll take our second hand and we got a little teeny little hole on the back of it which GoPro probably don't want to focus on because it's focusing on the background 
We've got a little teeny post in there. We'll line the two of them up together. And you'll feel it click in place. There it goes. Don't force it too hard. You'll just kind of feel a little snap. All right, and there you go. That's how you put your little clock parts together. And we got ourselves a nice little uh, timing chain clock. So um, I'm going to go ahead and call the video there. So we got our two timing chain clocks. Um, I hope you actually enjoyed the project. I did, uh, as usual, just put a nice layer of clear coat on it. And uh, that's all I ever do to finish these ones off. Um, thanks for watching my video.